Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the GFS, the GM, the Eastern UF, the Eastern UF Ensembles, the GFS Ensembles and we'll finish up looking at the UK Met Office run as well. Now the last few videos we have been looking at very mild conditions to be ending uh, 2021 and starting the first days of 2022 but I keep saying that the models have the potential for shifting very quickly to colder patterns and we're actually starting to see that. It looks around the 3rd or 4th of January we could be seeing a bit of a toppler northerly which isn't too unusual but would produce some colder weather and potentially some snow for some for a few days and we're generally seeing um, ensemble members and operational runs trending colder in the longer term. So we'll see how that does play out today. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow on Twitter as well, the link is in the description. Now before we get into the video, I just want to do a channel update very briefly. On YouTube, I have now um, added the option to become a channel member. So you go into a computer and go on to the channel page, you press the join button near the subscribe page, and you can now join uh, the channel um, for one ninety nine. so I've tried to keep it as cheap as possible, um, just gives me a little bit of financial help, and of course you get loyalty badges for how many months, you get custom emojis, which of course all of this will be updated as we get more members, YouTube allows you to unlock more perks to add, and also I've been trying to get back into comments, um, I have been slacking the last couple months, no, I'm sorry for that. But I'm trying to get back into it, and of course, any channel members will get priority with that, as I'm getting around 20 to 30 comments on each video, so it is difficult to give an in-depth um, reply to all of them. I'll try and get around to as many as possible, but if you are a channel member, of course, you will be getting um, priority with that. So do check that out if you're interested. I'm not going to be taking anything away from the free stuff on YouTube in general, just an added perk for those interested. And um, I have also got a donation page on Buy Me a Coffee, so if you want to visit that as well, feel free. Again, all of these links will be in the description. Again, no obligations at all, just if you want to help out. So now, if we get into the video, have a look at the latest GFS. You can see we've had a lot of rain around, um, and more bands of rain will be moving through over the next few days, as we do have a generally southwesterly pattern. Now, high pressure. It's slowly building over Europe, and by the end of this working week, it will be firmly in control, bringing out that much, much milder air to most of Europe and to the UK. Now, you can see that really quite warm air is, of course, over France, potentially giving 20 degrees, maybe, um, with the fern effect. But for the UK, generally temperatures will be around 14, 15 degrees, not massively mild um, in terms of it won't feel warm by any means. It will of course feel mild but it won't feel warm at all um we'll have a lot of cloud around showers around as well so even though potentially at some stage it looked like it could be in, into a little bit of a heat wave type pattern in the end of december it does look like it'll just be generally mild not warm really as you can see if you follow the ice bars it goes down to the central or north uh, central to north atlantic so a lot more moisture whereas if the direction was further southwards it'd be a much drier air pattern coming up from Africa and that would more likely make it feel that bit, bit warmer um, and that's similar to what we saw in February um, 2019 where we saw the warmest winter day um, going to the low 20s and we saw a direct southerly from Africa so we're not going to be seeing something like that but it's still going to be really quite mild. For those cold weather fans, though, it only lasts a few days. So by the end of the weekend, it's firmly swept away by Atlantic patterns. And this is where the models have suddenly started to prop up with some colder solutions. Now, they're not going for anything sustained cold at this stage. Um, this sort of pattern has only come into the model time frame in the last day or so. So it could sort of come out. But considering it's five, six days away, I very much doubt it. Because it's not a particularly unusual pattern of seeing a northerly Toppler pattern. Now, if we go to the pressure charts, you can see we're seeing this brief ridge of high pressure going, getting up towards Greenland and a split in the tropospheric polar vortex and the jet stream. And what this does is for a couple days, we start to bring in some really unsettled, bitterly cold northerly airflow right from the Arctic. And you can see the minus five line moves through, and in some of the runs, we're seeing the minus ten line get through as well so it's getting pretty cold there 
early next week. So as I said, these things can crop up very, very quickly. And of course, low pressure will be wintry showers around. Of course, the low-lying areas, considering we've had a very mild patch, and um, it's only going to be temporary, maybe two or three days, I doubt we'll see too much in the way of winteriness, unless this sort of sustains itself. But over the hills, northern areas, wouldn't be surprised to be seeing quite widespread frost potentially overnight and some snowflakes, the low-lying areas, um, for a time, and especially over hills as well. Now, it does eventually move through, and by sort of Wednesday, Thursday time, it's pushed away by an Atlantic weather front, and we stay generally westerly. Not seeing any massive pushes of milder air. We do, of course, see milder sectors and colder sectors, of course. And right towards day 10 beyond, we see a bit of a northwest-southeast alignment of the jet stream. Now, these sort of scenarios can be quite marginal for any wintriness, but they can be very wintry if we do get the exact setup. Colder air sinking out of Greenland, low pressure running along the jet stream just to our south, bumping into that colder air, we could see heavy snowfall for a time. But on this run, you can see, although we do pull in quite cold air for quite a sort of a long period of time the atlantic does push through um, a bit stronger um northwards further northwards and we do see more low pressure influencing us and right to the end of the run we still see the sort of northwest southeast alignment of the jet stream with cold air filtering into the north atlantic so it's not a classic bitterly cold spell by any means but it's not massive south westerly so it's kind of in between a cold and a mild pattern it would give us very seasonal conditions around average maybe if we get the right orientation below average temperatures and could produce quite a bit of snow over northern hills scottish highlands and of course we have to watch the air masses very carefully as we get the right orientation and right positioning we could even be seeing widespread wintriness with this even though it doesn't look like a classic cold pattern it's something we saw towards the end of january 2019 actually before that really warm spell we had in february but yeah towards the end of january 2019 we saw similar pattern to this with the northwest southeast alignment of the jet stream we saw some quite heavy snow four times again it was flip-flopping temperatures but when we did see the colder conditions it was pretty chilly so we'll have to keep an eye on how this uh, sort of goes again it is just one run but as we see with the gm the sendry f they are all showing similar sort of scenarios so if you have a look at the GM, see if that does compare again, generally you see high pressure building up over towards Europe. And we go into the southwesterly winds, really quite mild um, for a few days. Full low pressure eventually does sweep it away. And then we see that top low, low pressure system. And uh, well, top of high pressure with low pressure bringing much colder air through. And you can see bitterly cold air mass has moved through for a period of time. Again, it is very transient, only lasts a day or two. And then high pressure topples. Now, it all depends on the exact orientation of this high pressure. But, for example, if we got this bit further northwards, we'd stay pretty chilly, pulling in that colder air mass again in from the east. But on this latest GM run, it sits over the top of the UK and generally gives us pretty um chilly conditions um at least on the surface we could be seeing an inversion but there is quite a mild air mass there but interestingly if we go over the pressure charts again you can start to see the potential for a northwest southeast alignment of the jet stream with this high pressure really trying to push up further northwards i would expect this low to move in towards eastern europe or central europe and that's where we see um, this sort of south, uh, sort of northwest southeast alignment. So we'll have to see how that does play out. Of course, on this latest G GM, and it's sort of in between, not going any definitive signals, uh, especially in the long term. But we're seeing the Toppler pattern very similar, and you can see how these models have shifted colder, very slightly colder, but colder nonetheless in the last twenty four hours. And it's something we just have to keep an eye on because, of course, if this high pressure heading further northwards and if the jet stream does get to this northwest southeast alignment very subtle shifts can turn it to a northerly and then suddenly we are looking very cold so yeah we'll have to see how it does play out. as i said the blocking patterns that we're seeing um or we have been seeing again are sticking around and this all does link together so as i said we'll have to see how it does play out over the next few weeks but interesting model outputs are starting to come back in like i have been saying over the last few days i know some people have started um, to get a bit frustrated with the milder weather but as you can see by these latest model runs they are trending cold and not bitterly cold northerly or easterly winds at this stage but they are definitely trending more seasonal and colder so if you now have a look at the ecm that we have let us compare again this is the midnight run as the 12 set hasn't come out yet so it may be a bit more delayed in terms of showing the toppler, but 
but you can see generally does show the toppler for a, for a certain extent. It does go for a little bit with cold air mass moving through for a period of time, but nothing too massive. And right towards the end of the run, we are starting to see potential for a northwest southeast alignment with this high pressure ridging up towards um, northeast Canada. If we saw low pressure here, you'd think a general southwest even though it is southwest at this stage with that shift of high pressure moving up towards northeast canada you'd expect the wind direction to be coming out of greenland heading towards the uk which is sort of a, sort of a similar air mass to a northerly wind but because it takes a longer track over the north atlantic of course will be a little bit milder so that's why northwesterlies although can be very cold at times generally not no not bitterly cold um, so you can see that cold air towards green and that would be heading towards the uk of course heavily modified by the north atlantic but would generally turn things at least more seasonable and potentially colder so you have to keep an eye out for that of course over the next few weeks now if we do have a look at the ECM Earth ensembles, which does show these sort of patterns very well, because there is quite a lot of uncertainty at this stage, even though the models are generally in agreement up until day 7, maybe even up to day 10 in sort of uh, pressure charts, it does give us a very good idea of what we could be seeing over the next few weeks. So if we do run out to day 5, you can see generally high pressure over towards Europe, low pressure out in the Atlantic, pulling up southwesterly winds. But if we move to day 10, see big, big uh, or actually, let's go to day seven briefly, because that's when we see the top. You can see high pressure in the middle of the Atlantic, ridging up towards Greenland, northerly wind. Now, if we move to day 10, as I said, you can start to see models really diverging. You can see 12 right at the top, so only 23% with low pressure over the UK, high pressure up in the North Atlantic. That would be a northwest southeast alignment of the jet stream. Cold, not bitterly cold, but cold and seasonable and snow for some. Another 12, low pressure plunging southwards through Europe, higher pressure to our north, potentially a bit of a Scandinavian high. And that would, depending on the exact air masses, could be going cold, but at the same time could be our out average or maybe a little bit milder. Again, all depends on where the colder air over the North Pole is. Because if it is towards our side of the pole, towards Scandinavia by this time, we could be seeing much colder conditions. If I have a look at number 11, you can see generally high pressure over Europe, um, low pressure in the Atlantic, pulling up a south westerly wind, but once again high pressure out in the middle of the Atlantic and towards Greenland, so a bit of a mixed bag there, could be going colder after that. Another 11 have low pressure over Europe and towards Scandinavia, high pressure building up towards Greenland and northeast Canada. Again, a bit of a weird run, there would be a lot of cold air in this low pressure, but whether the UK is on the side of that cold air is yet to be determined. Another five going a massive sort of westerly pattern, uh, best from the west, with high pressure in the middle of the Atlantic, low pressure towards Greenland, and a flat westerly wind. If we go right towards the end of the run, however, you can see there is a massive mixed bag. Um, and this is why anyone saying January is determined, um, and is definitely going to be one way or another, is, yeah, very much um, very much speculating at this stage. As you can see, 12 are going for a pest on the west pattern, 23.5%. However, another 12 or 23.5% are going for a Scandinavian high. And that would be trying to build in cold wear up against jet stream, and that could be a snowy scenario. And again, whatever wins out in that scenario um, would either turn things milder or cold, of course. Scandinavian high winning out, we'd see much colder air taking over. Another 11 or 21.6%, similar to the other 12 with a Scandinavian high building and low pressure trying to push in off the Atlantic, looking like it's a bit more successful. Another 11 have just low pressure centered over to the north and northeast. Again, this would be similar with the northwest southeast alignment of the jet stream. You can see with this big lobe of cold air there, it would be drawing a lot of cold air out of the Arctic. So, although it might not be massively snowy, it could be pretty unsettled and chilly. And finally, we have another five with high pressure sitting over the UK. It would be an inversion type pattern, pretty chilly, but nothing too crazy. So you can see massive disparity at the end of the run. So yeah, we'll have to keep an eye really on what happens with that. So if we do have a look at the GFS ensembles to finish the video, and then we'll have a look at the UK Met Office run. You can be see by the six said how the ensembles have trended colder. Now they are really mild over the next sort of five days, but as we towards the third, fourth, fifth of January, we're seeing the temperatures quite widely get below average, and quite a few of the ensemble members include the operational run, of course, down to minus five, or even down to minus ten on a few of the runs, and some of them even staying there for a few 
days. And generally, the ensemble members after that, the average is now around or below uh, below the av- uh, below the 1981-2010 mean. Whereas yesterday, it was much higher than the mean. And if we go back to the six from last night, you can see how it was much, much higher than the mean. So it has trended significantly colder in the last day. There were some very cold runs, some very mild runs, and some precipitation, not masses, not little either. So it is a very mixed bag, but it's generally trended colder. And I do think the northwest southeast alignment of the jet stream is the more favoured scenario at this stage, which can be very cold, of course. So we'll have to keep an eye out for that, of course. And if we do see any blocking take hold, we are seeing signals potentially for a Scandinavia right at the end of the run, a Scandinavian high building. That's been something hinted by especially the GFS run right at the end of the run and by those ECMWF ensembles by a few of them right for the end of the run. But again, that's right, an extended range. So don't want to look into too much at this stage, but that's probably our closest route to proper bitterly cold conditions would be a Scandinavian high. But we're not seeing any massive signals for that over the next couple of weeks does generally look, after this real mild end of December and start of January, it will be turning much more seasonable. Snow would be returning to the north and especially over hills, and you can roll out to the south as well if we get the right alignment. And yeah, we'll have to see really how it does play out. Um, so yeah, have to uh, really have to watch out what happens with this. Fortunately, the 12s that hasn't updated um, for some reason. It's got to the sort of 3rd of January and it's sort of frozen. Um, it's not updating. Obviously, there is something wrong uh, at West Central's end or with the actual GFS ensemble run. Um, but you can see right towards the 3rd, 4th of January, you can see those uh, those ensemble members all dipping down to um, average or, uh, or the 1981 2010 mean and many of them getting now down to minus 5 AM50 HPA. So we'd expect that to follow on very swiftly from the 6 set run. Be interesting to show how that goes in the longer term, see if it does trend colder as well. Now, finally, we'll finish up with the UK Met Office run. Have a look at what's going to be happening over the next five days. You can see a lot of heavy rain over the next few days. See heavy rain moving through earlier today. And overnight tonight, there's another batch of heavier rain moving in from the southwest, spreading through all all areas. It's going to be some, seeing some rain over tonight into tomorrow morning. Should clear most areas in the south and the west by around lunchtime, early afternoon, but still lingering across Scotland, maybe eastern areas by early to mid-afternoon. Now beyond that, as we head through Wednesday evening into Thursday, more showers pushing in from the southwest. And we're seeing continued sort of showery conditions. As I said, even though we're pulling up much milder air from the southwest, it's not going to be beautiful sunshine, any anything summery like. It's going to be mild, yes, but cloudy and showery as well. And as we're talking weekend, just a lot more showers and weather fronts moving in. It doesn't look like there'll be a day going by where the rain potential isn't there. So this is one of the times where I would definitely keep a very close eye on the radar. Um, again, I don't want to look in too much detail beyond 48 hours because these things can shift quite massively um, in terms of sort of time frame by a few hours can make a big difference. could move uh, very heavy rain from 5 in the morning to rush hour at 8 a.m. So don't want to look too much beyond 48 hours at this stage, but it does look like there's going to be a lot of unsettled and rainy conditions, even though temperatures are on the up. Now, if we finish up, have a look at the 2 meter max temperatures. Over the next few days, you can see this afternoon temperatures were generally um, around or just a touch above average in the south, 9, 10 degrees. Feeling still chilly though with quite a strong wind. By tomorrow afternoon, we're going to be seeing temperatures in the morning actually uh, around freezing across Scotland. But in the southwest, you can see that really mild air starting to push in. By the afternoon, 14 or 15 degrees is possible, really quite mild. Further northwards, still in the single digits, but all areas will be trending milder. By Thursday, and you can see that real mild air, early hours of the morning, 12, 13, 14 degrees. That's going to be one of the big things. Overnight, it's really not going to drop at all. It's going to do big, big damage to the CET. I mean, it's going to be turning up really quite mild end December and start January. Very, very mild indeed. Um, it's already quite a mild CET, around 1 or 2 degrees above average, and that's only going to get worse. Um, and I suspect January will start pretty mild as well with the CET. Um, by Thursday afternoon... We'll be seeing temperatures once again, 13 to 15 degrees potentially, even across Scotland, the Highlands, 6, 7, 8 degrees, so doing quite a bit of damage to the uh, snow patches there as well. But hopefully if we do see this northwesterly um, winds, northwest, southeast of the jet stream, it would be very, very good for hills of Scotland. So maybe even if it does get um, 
deplenished um uh, or depleted sorry over the next couple of days um it's going to be replenished hopefully come january by friday temperatures once again getting up into the mid teens 15 degrees possible um quite widely across the midlands central southern england and by saturday once again 12 13 degrees before slowly things start to turn a little bit chillier from the west but not chilly really that not, not particularly chilly at all really 9 10 degrees but not the 14 15 degrees that we will have been seeing throughout thursday friday saturday time so yeah looking very mild over the next few days for the trend is much much colder towards sort of the beginning of january of course the first couple of days might be still quite mild but around third or fourth of january it does look like we're going to be seeing a topler high pressure system topler northerly wind with much colder air mass moving through for a time potentially with snow and frost around with that and beyond that we could be seeing a northwest southeast alignment of the jet stream so do stay tuned for that and keep up to date with the weather warnings also yeah of course make sure you check out the uh, channel membership and buy me a coffee of course no obligation um, as ever but would really help me out um, to go and have a look at those so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon